Sean O'Hara here on the Rich Eisen Show, my colleague from the NFL Media Group. How are you, Sean? Hey, Rich. I'm doing well. How are you, man? Where are you calling from? Are you, are you, were you arrested? Bunker. Are you in the tank? Where are you, Sean? What's <laughs> happening? No, I'm actually at a, I'm at a place called American Cut. I just had, a, uh, uh, had to do a little luncheon. Uh, they call it a, a lunch with the legends. It's uh, okay. for the New York Giants and some of the uh, sponsors okay. and sweet holders. So that means uh, Eli Manning was there? Is that what you mean? Uh, no, Eli was not oh, here. Oh, Strahan was, was there? So, so Strahan was there? Was Strahan there? Yeah, no. Eli got tackled in the parking lot. He got sacked. Oh! Uh, and, and, <laughs> and Strahan, um, you know, okay. he had to do right. he had to do another appearance for his, his ugly suits for All right. that, that he So, so know, uh, hold models. on. So, so Seahorn was there? Was Seahorn there? <laughs> uh, keep, keep guessing. Uh, You're going down the list. Who else? Were you there, Sean? Uh, you know, I just snuck in the back. <laughs> I... I I, they, they asked me for my invitation, and I said I lost it in the mail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm that guy. Oh, I love it. So no, here let's let's walk. I'm going to walk you all on the Rich Eisen show. If you didn't hear this story I told last week, through okay, going getting ready for the Tuesday night season opener edition of NFL Game Day Morning. Okay, the season preview show, and I'm sitting there thinking I think it's going to be Patriots Giants in the Super Bowl. I think we're going to see Eli and Tom one more time. The football gods want it. Because I like this defense. I like Brandon Marshall in this offense. I think Paul Perkins improved himself throughout the rest of the year. And I walk into the green room, the dressing room, and who do I see sitting in there saying, not so fast? Who was that person? Who was that person? Oh, I don't know. Was it, uh, was it Irv? No, it was a New York Giant legend who I'm talking to right now. <laughs> And what did you tell me that was your doubt? Go ahead, say it. Uh, you can I, say I it. said I had some I had some legitimate concerns about the offensive line. Yes, you did. And did you take that hammer and hit the nail right on the head, man? What is going on with that unit, Sean? You know, Rich. Last year we we kind of watched it and we just said, wow, you know, I, these guys can they get better? Okay, and everything was they're young, you know, so they're they're going to improve, they're going to get better, um, and. Man, it just hasn't happened. And I think everybody's frustrated. The fans are frustrated. Um, I think that the team is frustrated. And, you know, the, my, my big question, Rich, is just, look, if you know you have an offensive line that's struggling in pass protection, that one-on-one pass pro is kind of not their thing, why wouldn't you run the ball more? You, you, you brought in a fullback in the offseason. You brought in Rhett Ellison, the uh, Swiss Army Knights tight end, and yet – they're still acting like they're allergic to running the ball. They have yet to run the ball three times in a row at any point this season. And, <laughs> wow. you know, you, you got to help those guys out. So what's the answer? I mean, seriously, at 0-3, at going into Tampa, which has a, a, a pretty damn good front seven, what is the answer, Sean O'Hara? Well, the, the one thing that, that I think everybody in that locker room has to understand is there is no cavalry coming. There's no hero coming to save the day. Um, you know, the, the guy's got to play better. You know, I never, I never as a player came out of a loss or came in a week and said, hey, coach is going to draw up some great plays that all of a sudden they're going to help us win the game. No, it was, I got, we got to do our job better. And, you know, I think that really, that responsibility is shared across the board. Um, Eli can certainly play better. He can make some better throws. The receivers can catch the ball better. Um, you know, the offensive line certainly can block better and play better, but the situational football is not there. Um, you know, look, they, they go for it on third and one. And, Rich, I got to be honest with you, if I'm in the huddle and on third and freaking one, we're going to call a toss crack and we're not going to run the ball in the front side or back side A gap, I'm, I'm pissed as an offensive lineman. So I, I saw that play and I just, I got angry. Um, I, I think that. This team's really looking at this, and they're saying, "Look, we got We got to find a way to create some positive momentum." So, I like the way they started the game last week against Philly with the up tempo, the no huddle. I think that's when Eli's at his best. So, I think they, you got to do something. You got to just go with that. And, and even if you have to do it for the whole game, at least you wear down the defense a little bit. Uh, but this is uh, this is definitely trying times for for everybody that believes blue. Sean O'Hara of the NFL Network here on the Rich Eisen Show. Tonight we see Green Bay take on the Bears. Um, it, is it safe to say the Bears have a better offensive line than Green Bay and that might be a difference 
in tonight's game, even though it's heresy to even suggest that uh, Aaron Rodgers might lose this one in Lambeau? Tonight? Yeah, well, they're definitely they're definitely healthier. Um, you know, getting Kyle Long back last week helped out. Um, I, you know, for Green Bay, you know, they just keep losing tackle after tackle. And, it's and I unbelievable. Think, it, I mean, Aaron yeah. Rodgers was running for his life. The fact that they were able to come back and win that game against Cincinnati was unbelievable, Sean. Certainly without it, it, Randall Cobb. Yeah, I, w- w- what he's been able to do in spite of what's going on around him um, just kind of lets you know what a special talent he is. You know, he, he, I think he's, he's got some Jason Bourne-like quality. <laughs> he, just, he, he seems to always know, like, where the escape route is. You know, he knows that he could jump out of the third-story window and he's going to land in a trash dumpster safely. Like, he's just got that knack. I, I think the offensive line, you, you – you know, I love that you're focusing on, on the big balls because the Bears O-line, what they did to the Steelers defense was phenomenal. I mean, the, the, the 220 yards rushing, Mike Glennon didn't have to do anything. All he had to do was hand off the ball. So uh, this, this game is going to be a lot closer than I think people think. And obviously with the Bears O-line, their run game, um, the, the Green Bay Packers red zone defense has been very suspect. And I'll say this, if, if Chicago ends up kicking field goals, I think it's Green Bay wins. Aaron Rodgers is going to find Tory Nelson in the red zone. But uh, if, the, if the Green Bay Packers red zone defense doesn't find a way to slow down this run game, uh, it's going to be this game's coming down to the wire. So uh, I'm paying attention to the offensive line, Sean, because I have I have a set of eyes and I'm seeing what the NFL's look like through the first three weeks of this season. Uh, I saw I saw I saw the Cardinals come out like a house of fire, but not able to close because they couldn't block DeMar- Demarcus Lawrence. As a matter of fact, one field goal. I mean, one touchdown got 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 called back because Lawrence, uh, earned a, you know, drew a holding penalty despite being part of a three-man rush. I've seen Seattle have major problems through the first three weeks of this season, and then I've seen other teams because of their offensive line look far more cohesive and have a better shot at winning football games. And I'm wondering why that is. It, does it seem to you that 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 that? Well, and I also see Garrett Bowles on the left tackle in Denver make a major difference on that offensive line and the way that team's looked through the first three weeks of the season. What What is the the, the status of line play in the 2017 NFL uh, world, Sean? Well, it's scary. And i tell you who it's scary for. It's scary for the owners and the teams that are paying one guy $25 million and they can't even protect them in a five-yard pocket. So I... I, I think the crazy thing is you see the, the shift in pay. Quarterbacks getting more money every single year. They're getting paid more and more and more. That money's coming from somewhere. Well, they take it from the O-line. You know, and this is, to me, it's like the equivalent of putting a, a padlock, you know, the, the padlock that you have on your gym locker on a $3 million house. You don't, you don't go cheap on the security system on a $3 million house. You, you, you put up you know, the the -the state-of-the-art equipment, that's what you're seeing. I mean, the Seattle Seahawks have spent the least amount of money on their offensive line when you look at all 32 teams, and it shows. And why did they do that? Well, because they had to pay Russell. They're also paying all the guys on defense. So um, I've always said that offensive linemen are kind of like the tires on your car. Nobody pays attention to them until they go flat. So when you take your Range Rover in, Rich, and they tell you, hey, it's going to cost you a couple grand because the treads are a little low on your tires, go ahead and pay for it now. Don't wait. So you're on the side of the 405, and you're looking for someone to come rescue you. Well, um, Sean, that's Sean, kind of the way old I'm up. Well, Sean, I, you've been away a long time. I, I don't, I don't drive Range Rovers no more. It's Honda. Rich Eisen show in Honda. Okay. All right, all right, Sean. Been away a long time. Uh, you, you haven't been to the you, show you studio own, in a while. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You have your own driver. No, 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 no. Honda. I'm a family man, Sean. Okay. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining. And hey, man, uh, you are a legend, Sean. You are a legend. You are I'm going to go I'm going to go tell Stray and you said hi. Yeah, tell Stray I said hi and say Seahorn <laughs> and I said hi, okay? All right, that's All right. Uh, I, I think I think Shockey's in there serving drinks too. Okay. You take care. That's Sean O'Hara. The Rich Eisen show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app. Don't have any memory on your phone? Let's start to delete some of those slow-mo videos you have. And you know which ones I'm talking about.